Welcome Samadhi community. I'm Amy and I'm really excited and happy to be here with you for this practice. It's an all levels class and please do make it all levels. So anything that works for you, feel free to modify um, in any way. Begin by finding a comfortable seat. I am sitting on a couch cushion that might work for you if you have something else to sit on, a blanket or something else to help you to sit more comfortably, feel free to do that. Allow your eyes to close. And begin to tune into your own presence, your physical body, however you show up, however you feel, the physical body, maybe any sense of energy in your body, places where you may feel a little more open, places you may feel guarded. Not that you need to change that in any way, just to develop a deeper awareness. And in your mind's eye, see if you can connect with your tailbone, the base of your spine. And as you inhale, begin to lengthen your spine and imagine that you could create a straighter spine. Not necessarily anatomically straighter, but the idea that you're inviting this space that you are joint stacking, that you're aligning so that your tailbone is positioned under your the, the crown of your head, that your shoulders are positioned above your hips. Allow your belly to be soft, inviting in expansion in the belly with the inhale and allowing it to expand the body open. So maybe as you inhale into your ribs, they expand like the gills of a fish up into your chest. And then as you exhale, let everything empty out, pull things in, squeeze. Three parts here for breath, belly and ribs and chest. And then later on the Ujjayi breath, ocean sounding breath, that sounds like the wind through the trees or the ocean waves. Some people say Darth Vader. <clears throat> what I always try to remember ended up being good slight constriction in the back of the throat. And then invite your hands to come together at your heart space and bring a little bit of friction between your hands gently. Eyes closed if that feels okay. And then let your hands come into stillness. And we'll begin with a cleansing breath. Take a deep, full breath in. Open your mouth and let it go. Beautiful, allow your eyes to open. Shift your weight back enough that you can uncross and recross your legs. If your legs are straight, you could give them um, a little wiggle, depending on what feels comfortable for you in this seated position. Inhale your arms up, and then as you exhale, twist over toward the left. So your right hand comes to your left thigh, your left hand comes back behind you. Draw the right shoulder down. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, either stay here or you could turn your head further to the left. So looking over toward that left shoulder, if that's you. Beautiful. And then inhale, keep your hands where 
where they are for now. Begin to turn back toward the front. Right hand stays positioned where it is. Left arm lifts up and overhead. And then really draw that left shoulder back. Suggest your right shoulder down. And then inhale, lifts you up. Exhale, let your left hand come down to the earth. Reach your right arm up and overhead and maybe crawl those left fingers farther away from you. Let the left shoulder relax down. If your left hand is on the earth, maybe give it a little press. And then inhale, find your way back to center. Let your hands come to touch and then down to your heart. Place your hands down at your side, shift your weight back, extend your legs out. So we're gonna just come into a staff pose between the twists, flex the toes in towards you. Hands at your sides, press down through your legs and press a little bit into your hands to help bring the weight out of your low back. Activate your feet, maybe separate the toes if that's you. Beautiful. Shift your weight back a, a little bit. Bring your feet together into Baddha Konasana or Cobbler's Pose. Press down through the legs. Imagine you could reach your sitting bones, your hips towards your feet. Beautiful. And then shift your weight back and we're gonna cross our legs once again. Inhale your arms up and as you exhale, twist over to the right, left hand Two right thigh, right hand back behind you. Draw your shoulders down. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, chin stays where it is or you can look over toward the right shoulder. Beautiful. And then keeping your left hand right where it is, inhale your right arm up and twist over, arc over toward the left. So we did that a little bit differently on this side. Beautiful. And then as you inhale, find your way back up to center, exhale the right hand down, left arm lifts up, arcing over. And if it's you, you can crawl your right fingers over. It's not better, it's just a little different. Draw that right shoulder down, maybe look down to be kind to your neck. And then inhale, draw you all the way back up. Place your hand down, shift your weight back. Legs come out in front of you. If you have a cushion of support, you could set it aside. Feet on the mat. Let your knees come from one side to the other. If this feels uh, tender on your wrist, you could come onto soft folded fish. You could also come down onto forearms. Take this opportunity to Come back to your breath. Beautiful. And the next time your knees come over to the right, pause, and then crawl your way around. Onto your hands and knees. If you have a blanket, you could pad beneath your knees. That's a really nice way to take care of yourself. Um, make sure that your wrists are under your shoulders. Fan the fingers really wide apart. And also here you could once again, make any adjustments coming onto soft folded fists or forearms if that's more comfortable for you. We'll begin to articulate the spine, moving through cats and dogs. So tuck your tailbone and your chin under, reach down, press down into the heels of your hands and then reverse that, lift the chin, lift the tailbone. Exhale, coming back into a cat. Inhale, let the belly drop. Exhale, lift up through the canopy of the spine. Maybe squeeze the groin at the top of the exhale. And then inhale, reverse. Now, if your neck is feeling tender in any way, you can keep your gaze down. You can move through cats and dogs with your cervical spine still. So in other words, looking down and keeping your head right where it is. Yogi's choice. Beautiful. And then the next time you come into a flat back pause, take a deep breath in and as you exhale, suggest your left shoulder towards your left hip and then back through center, take it to the other side. So as if you were looking down from above, you would see your body beginning to create these little C's from one side to the other. Again, notice your breath, so you're exhaling as you come into that curve. 
Inhaling in the center, beautiful. And then find your way back. We're gonna move into downward facing dog. So fingers fan wide apart, curl your toes under, lift up and back. So the knees lift up, the hips reach up and back. Let the head be heavy. Reach back through the backs of your legs. Little bend into the elbows. Hug the elbows, the inner elbows in toward each other. And then lift up onto the balls of the feet so the heels lift up. And then exhale, let the heels sink down. Inhale one more time, heels lift up. Exhale, let the heels sink down. Beautiful. And then walk your feet in toward each other. So your big toes come in close. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, extend your right leg straight back behind you. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, maybe the left heel sinks down a little bit closer to the earth. Option to bring a bend into your right knee, and then if it's you, you could stack your hips so that your left, your right hip is stacking more over toward your left. And then you can stay here, or if flip the dog is in your practice, you could place all of the weight into your left hand, lifting the right arm up, really reaching up through your hips. If you didn't flip, then stay where you are. Keep your stack, your hips stacked. If you did flip, come back. And then everybody square your hips and set your foot down. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. <sighs> Beautiful, and then shift the weight into your right foot. Inhale your left leg straight back behind you. Take a deep breath in as you exhale. Maybe the right heel sinks down a little bit closer to the earth. Bring a bend into your left knee, stacking your hips. You can stay right here if you care to flip the dog on this side. Place the weight into your right hand. Let the left foot come to the earth. Reach actively up through the left hand, hips lift. And then if you flip the dog, come back and let your foot come down. Everybody square your hips, foot to the earth. Let your knees come down, uncurl your toes. Find your way into child's pose. Surrender the head. Stillness or maybe a little bit of rocking from side to side. Come back to your breath. The dynamic experience of moving into a little bit of movement and heat and then allowing the body to relax and to take it in, to integrate. Beautiful. And then as you inhale, find your way forward, coming into table. You can take your time. You don't have to rush through any of this. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, extend your right leg straight back behind you. Point back through your right toes and then flex your toes in toward you. See if you can draw that right pinky toe down. And then in your mind's eye, think about your left shoulder and your right hip, and imagine they could be on the same plane. Shift the weight toward the right hand, extend the left arm out straight in front of you. Now, if that right hand is not positioned directly under the right shoulder, you can come out for a moment and reposition. Come back to your breath. Really actively reach back through the heel and forward through the fingers. Beautiful. And then as you exhale, place your hand down and cross your leg over to the left. Let your foot come down. So you can either have your toes curled under or you could come onto the top of your foot. Take a deep breath in. Open your mouth and let it go. Beautiful. And then lift your foot and set your knee down. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, extend your left leg straight back behind you. Shift the weight towards your left wrist and hand. Right arm reaches forward. So you can also modify here by coming onto a soft folded fist and you could do this also on your forearm is another option. 
Gazes down at the mat once you know where you're going. Reach back through those left toes and then flex the toes in towards you. Shaking is good. Draw the left pinky toe down. Think about where your right shoulder and your left hip are. Imagine they could be on the same plane. Beautiful. Place your hand down, set your knee down. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. And then lengthen the left leg straight back behind you, crisscross it over to the right, looking at the right hand or maybe over the right shoulder. Let that left hip be heavy. Gorgeous. And then with as much control as you can, lift the foot, set the knee down, curl your toes under, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. And then begin to walk your feet in. So walk your feet in about one step each. So right foot forward about one foot, <laughs> one actual anatomical foot forward. And then begin to bend your knees, walk your feet in closer to your hands. And then all the way up to the top of your mat. Inhale, come halfway up. Crown of the head reaches forward, sitting bones reach back. So imagine you could find so much length here in the spine and that you could be so aligned where your shoulders could be on the same plane as your hips that you could actually balance a tray of drinks there. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, come into a forward fold. We'll spend a few breaths here. You could clasp opposite elbows if you'd like. You could bring a generous bend into your knees and bring your arms back behind you. Hands can come to the base of your skull, your occipital ridge, lots of options. Beautiful, and then release that. Bring your hands to your hips and hold on and hinge your way all the way up to standing and then release your arms up and overhead look up reach up palms come together exhale bring your hands to your heart take a deep breath and interlace your fingers as you exhale reach forward through your palms as you bend your knees inhale straighten the legs lengthen the arms up and overhead maybe a little back bend and then as you exhale bring your hands back behind you Draw your shoulder blades in, feel down into your feet, and then release your hands to your heart. And we'll do that one more time. Take a deep, full breath in, interlace your fingers, exhale, reach forward. Maybe you come down a little bit lower, weight is shifting back toward the heels. Perhaps you lift your toes. And then inhale, power down into your feet, lift your arms up overhead, back bend if it's you. And then exhale, bring your hands back behind you, interlace the fingers, upper arm bones draw toward each other, squeeze your thighs, squeeze your groin, lift up in your heart, and then release your hands out in front of you. Beautiful. Top of your mat if you're not there already. Take a deep breath and shift the weight towards your right foot. Bend your left knee and see if you can take hold of the top of your left foot with your left hand, right hand at your waist to help stabilize. So really press your hand at your waist, like you grip it, you're gripping at your waist. Foot and hand are connected. Sometimes we call that like closing the chain. Let that left shoulder be soft. Beautiful. And then release that, extend your right leg, your left leg rather, straight out in front of you. Throw shoulders back. And then plant the left foot onto the earth and bring the right foot into tree. So you might take the, the ball of the foot could be on the earth with the heel in. You could bring the foot to the, to the calf or to the thigh. Hands come to your heart. Find something to stare at that's not going to move, something on the wall. Drishti point. Don't be hard on yourself. 
And then inhale your arms up and overhead. Lengthen the side body. See if you can take some of the weight out of your low back by lifting up and lengthening. Option to bring your hands together in volcano. And then as you exhale, continue to press the foot into the leg. Let your arms come down and, and with as much control as you can, place your right foot onto the earth. Bring your hands to your heart. Close your eyes. And breathe. That echo of what you've done. It's for some reason I just got this image of sort of like a, if you had a snow globe and you shook it up and then those little filaments, the little snow particles sort of coming down really gently. Beautiful. And then allow your eyes to open. Bring your hands back to your waist. Shift the weight towards your left foot. Lift your right knee up. And then let the knee come down, reach for the top of the right foot with the right hand. Doesn't matter how many times it takes you to get there. Draw that right shoulder back. Beautiful. And then with as much control as you can, release that right hand comes back to your waist, extend the right leg straight out in front of you. You can flex the toes in toward you. Stand tall, best as you can. Notice that you're breathing. And then place the right foot down and find tree on the other side. Stay lifted. Hand position is yogi's choice. Press the foot at the leg, the leg at the foot. Sometimes um, it's possible to Bring to mind more of a hip opener, so as if you could draw that left knee back a little bit. And then arms come up and overhead. Shoulders away from the ears. Once again, lengthening the side body. Option to bring your hands together in volcano. As you exhale, you can play with Mula Bandha, squeezing your groin. And then to come out, it's just as important, if not more so, how we come out. So sometimes I come out of pose and then I go back in so that I can come out with a little more control or intention. Release the foot back down to the earth. And then we're gonna to come to, to some empty coat sleeves. So make sure you have some space around you, allowing your arms to swing. You can keep your heels on the earth. Sometimes people lift one heel and then the other, especially if you have knee sensitivity. I remember going to a training once and the teacher said, if they had to choose only one thing for people to do, for yogis to do one posture, so for those that can stand and have some balance, they would choose this because it's such an incredible twist and it tends to, at least for some people, shift energy. And we'll add in a little bit of horror breath, so it's sort of like a martial art vibe a little bit. So you inhale in the center and you exhale with a ha. Ha, 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 two more, ha, ha. And then allow yourself to slow. You don't have to put on the emergency brake. Just allow yourself to come back to center. Beautiful. Inhale your arms. You moved like I did. Come back to the top of your mat. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, dive it forward into a forward fold. Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Inhale, hands come to your shins. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees a whole lot. Bring your arms out to the sides. Press into your feet. Come up with really strong legs. Hands come together, a little back bend here. And then exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Beautiful. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. 
Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, step your right foot back. So way back into a low lunge, a runner's lunge. Reach back through the right heel and forward through the left knee. Bring your hands to your waist and come on up into a, a high lunge. Arms overhead, Virabhadrasana one. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, begin to twist over to rotate over toward the right to come into Virabhadrasana two. And I'm gonna turn. Arms are extended out to T. If your shoulders feel sensitive, you could bring your hands to your heart. Take really full deep breaths here. Shoulders draw back and down. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, let your right hand come to your right thigh. Left arm reaches up and back. And then option to bring your, a bend into your right forearm and to bring it to your low back if that's you. Keep a bend in your front knee. Inhale back to warrior two and then exhale into side angle. Forearm to thigh, reaching your arm up and overhead. You can press your forearm at your thigh, that's an option, or you can keep it a lighter touch. Inhale brings you back up into warrior two, and then as you exhale, straighten out your front leg, bring your hands to your waist, and walk your back foot in about six inches. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, kick your hips way back, Arms lengthen out to T. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, bring your one hand down and your upper arm up. Take hold of your thigh, your shin with your left hand and give a little press down. Fan the fingers up. So this is a variation. You press down and reach up. You could look down to be kind for your, to your neck. You can look forward or up. And then do take a moment to look up and reach up. Find your way all the way back up. Bring your hands to your waist. Put the weight into your left heel. Spin your foot so that now both of your feet are parallel. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, hinge your way forward, coming into a wide angled forward fold. Let your head go. Now you may want to reposition the distance between your feet. You can... Check it out for yourself, what feels better. Yoga is a practice, it's an exploration. It's an opportunity to connect with your breath. Breathing and feeling. Beautiful. And then begin to walk both of your hands over toward the left as you bend your left knee. And then back through center, over to the right. So we're going to start to move from side to side. So many opportunities to make adjustments, to fine tune here. You could really let the weight be heavy on your hands as you move. Sometimes people find a lighter touch. Some folks like to bring their hands to their heart. Really, really up to you and what would serve you right now. You could spin the, the leg that's extended. You could spin those toes up if you'd like. Or not. Coming back to the breath. One more time to each side. Beautiful. Next time you come to center, straighten out your legs, bring your hands to your waist and hold on to bring yourself all the way back up. And then inhale your arms up and overhead. We're gonna come into a five-pointed star. Squeeze your thighs. You could squeeze your groin here. Lengthen the side body, open your hands. And then as you exhale, float your arms back down at your sides. Beautiful. Heel toe step, hop your feet together. Beautiful. 
and then turn to face the front once again. So let's say the front of the rooms come to face the, um, to the front of your mat. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Beautiful. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Bring a generous bend into your knees and then step walk or hop your feet back to come into plank pose. To high push up, knees up or knees down. Hug your inner thighs in toward each other. Feet are only a few inches apart. Fan your fingers wide apart. Imagine you could lift up the backs of your thighs as you keep your hips where they are. And then on your next exhale, find your way into downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Open your mouth and let it go. Beautiful. Look forward, step, walk, or hop your way to the top of your mat. Coming into your to a forward fold and then inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, forward fold, bend your knees a lot, step your left foot back to come into a runner's lunge, a low lunge. Bring your hands to your waist, coming up into uh, Virabhadrasana one. Arms come up and overhead. And then as you exhale, shift your way over to the left into warrior two. Beautiful. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, reverse recline your warrior. Inhale back to warrior two. And then as you exhale, come into side angle. Again, you could have your forearm pressing at your thigh or you can keep it light. Inhale back to warrior two. Exhale, straighten out your front leg. Bring your hands to your waist and then walk that left foot in. Deep breath in, exhale, kick your hips back, lengthen your arms. As you exhale, right hand comes down to the shin, left arm lifts up, give a little press at the shin. Beautiful. And then inhale, draws you all the way back up. Exhale, bend your front knee, Cartwheel your hands forward to frame your foot. Back heel lifts up, coming into a runner's lunge. And then as you exhale, bring your right hand to the inside of your foot. Set your back knee down, uncurl your toes, shift your weight toward the left, step your right knee back. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out. And then we're gonna move into thread the needle. Plant the weight into your right hand Inhale your left arm up. And then as you exhale, scoop it through, scoop it under, bend your right elbow as much as you can, come down to rest on the left side of your head. Your temple or cheekbone. You can keep your right hand where it is. You can Walk it further forward, away from you, toward the front of the room. Some people like to stay here. Keeping your hand on the earth is very grounding. Others like to play with floating the right arm up toward the sky. You can stay here, option to curl right toes under to lift the right leg. Wherever you are, see if you can round out your breath. If you're interested in trying to move into a bind, you could bend that right knee, reaching the top of the foot with your hand. If you came into a bind, release with as much control as you can. If your leg is up, bring your knee down. If your arm is up, bring your hand down. Press into your right hand and lift the left arm up to come into a counter stretch. And then exhale, let that hand come down. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, let your head hang. Give a shake of your head, yes. Beautiful. And then coming back up into a flat back. If your knees are closer together, you can give a little bit of space between your knees. 
plant down into your left hand, inhale your right arm up. And then as you exhale, scoop it through, come under, really bend that left elbow. If you don't feel like the way you landed is comfortable, feel free to come in and out as many times as it takes. So as I said, it's always a practice. The same pose never shows up the same way from practice to practice or even within the same practice. Opt you to crawl the left fingers forward away from you toward the top of your mat. Some folks like to lift that arm up. Option to curl the left toes under. Maybe lifting the leg. Coming into a bind or not. Here in the bind, let that go. If your leg is up, bring the knee down. If your arm is up, Bring your hand down, press into your hand, lift the right arm up and overhead under your counter stretch. Exhale, let your hand come down. And then walk your hands in so close to yourself that you can shift your hips over to one side and your legs out in front of you. So from, from here, Begin to walk your hands in towards your body and let your hips come over to one side and your legs out in front. And what we're going to do now is take a, a bolster or a couch cushion or a pillow, or it could be a blanket. You don't even, you don't have to have one of these, but I'm going to um, suggest that if you do, that we can incorporate this into what we're doing. So bring your feet to the edges of your mat and then take your whatever it is and um, scooch it back toward the back of your mat. Feet are wide on the mat, take a deep breath in and as you exhale, let your knees go over to the right. And then you're gonna walk your hands in towards your legs so that you're sitting up really tall. Your um, cushion of support is going to be positioned, so if you wanna place it along the thigh, you could do that. You're gonna um, position it so that it's toward uh, back behind you at an angle, and you can adjust that as we go. So plant down into your right hand and lift your left arm up, and then you're gonna begin to rotate toward the wall behind you, toward your crop. And then as you exhale, lower down. If it doesn't feel comfortable to come all the way down, you could stay lifted on your hands. You could also stack different things, like if you were using cushions or blankets, you could take use more than one. If this feels like too much stretch, you could place your left knee on top of your right, coming into more of the fetal position. This is a restorative posture, so allow yourself to let go of any doing as best as you can. Continue to breathe. See if you can soften. So when you soften the muscles in your body, you allow for a deeper experience in the twist. Deeper breath and softer muscles help to really deepen the whole experience. And then gently begin to press your way back up, plant the weight into your right hand and lift your left arm up and overhead. We're gonna come back to center, grab whatever it is you're using and scooch it over to the other side. Feet wide apart as you exhale, let your knees go over to the left. And once again, sit up tall, that changes it. Plant down into your left hand, inhale your right arm, and then twist toward the wall behind you, one hand on either side, and then lower down. Coming back to your breath. 
the breath be sweet here. Allow yourself to relax as best as you can. Soft muscles, deep breath. This posture can help with digestion and absorption and elimination. It's good for the nervous system. Soften your glutes, soften your jaw. If it's too much, you can place your right knee on top of your left. This might be a nice posture to come back to sometime if you're Looking for a few moments of relaxation. And then gently begin to press into your hand. Place the weight into your left hand and reach your right arm, popping over, finding your way back to center. Place the cushion or the blanket to the side. Scoot your hips in towards your heels. And then lower down onto your back body. Walk your heels in close to your sitting bones, and then press into your feet and place the bolster, the blanket, or the um, couch cushion underneath your hips. You can keep your feet on the ground, or you can play with lifting your legs up toward the sky for a supported hip stand. You might need to reposition a little bit so that you're Whatever it is that you have beneath you is right under your sacrum. Broaden across your shoulders, soften. Palms could be face down, palms could be face up. If your legs are lifted, you could wiggle your toes. You could play with pointing and flexing your feet. If your feet are on the earth, then notice what it feels like to have that grounded energy of having the feet connected to the floor. And if your legs are lifted, you can play with separating the, the feet, plugging into a, a V. And then on your next exhale, if your feet are up, you're going to bend into your knees and place your feet back down onto the earth. Press into your feet, remove whatever you have beneath you. If you have anything, place it to the side. Keep your right foot on the earth. Bring your left heel to your right knee. Deep breath in, and then as you exhale, option to lift the right foot up off of the earth, and you use your left hand to thread through that triangle that you've created, interlacing your fingers either behind your right thigh or over your right shin bone. Flex the toes in towards you. Stillness or rock swinging from side to side. Close the eyes if that's comfortable. And then on your next exhale, if you clasp and release, let the right foot come back down, place the left foot on the earth, bring the right ankle to the left knee, the thigh. So you're taking it to the other side, right hand, through that triangle that you've created, lifting the left foot. If it feels more comfortable to keep the left foot on the earth, you can do that. Clasping behind the left thigh or over the left shin bone. Flexing the toes in to activate the feet, reaching out through the heels. And then begin to release this, unclasp your hands. If they're clasped, let the foot come back down to the earth. Place the left, the right foot and the left foot on the mat. Bring them wide on the mat, about mat width apart. Arms come out into goddess. Let your knees fall from side to side as your head 
moves in one direction, let your knees move in the opposite direction. Beautiful. <laughs> and then find your way back to center. Hug your knees in towards your chest. We'll come into a happy baby. So reaching either the hands to the outsides of your feet, the pinky toe side, or the inside. You could also clasp your pant legs if that is accessible. Sometimes people use peace fingers on the big toes. Stay still or rock. And then release that. Let your feet come back down to the earth and extend your legs out to the side. We're going to come into Shavasana. Arms at your sides, palms face up, or if you feel that uh, a little more grounded energy would serve you, you can have your palms face down. Making any adjustments, certainly if there are any final movements or poses that would make you feel more able to relax into Shavasana, take those. Beginning to release control over the breath, allowing the natural intelligence of the body to resume control. Next inhale, begin to deepen your breath. Inviting any movements into your fingers and your toes. Drawing in your mouth and eyes behind eyelids. Perhaps allowing your head to fall gently from side. Begin to bring a bend into your knees, draw them in towards your chest. Allowing for a little rocking from side to side. Finding your way over onto your right side, and then right away take support by pressing into your hands and 
coming all the way back up into seated. If you close your eyes and lengthen your spine. Bring your index finger and your thumbs to touch. Right index finger to right thumb, left index finger to left thumb. Straighten your arms, sit tall. Squeeze your groin, mula bandha. Feeling your own power, your own groundedness. And then let your hands come to touch together at your heart and Anjali Mudra. Bow your head forward to yourself, to your own light, your inner wisdom, sense of the eternal. And we'll seal our practice and our time together, joining our voices in the song of Aum. Take a deep breath in. Hari Om Shanti 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 Peace Peace to you and peace to our world The light in me honors and